curriculum homeschooling multiple grade levels um, for this year and today I am going to tell you about what my curriculum picks were or how I planned out my curriculum for language arts here is how I approached language arts so my kids um, both of my boys are all reading extremely well um, my daughter is not reading yet she knows her letters and her letter sounds and she knows a few letter blends how i started here was this was a little bit of an area of just not sure how i was going to approach it so this is where i use time for learning they have a scope and sequence which basically lays out how they built their curriculum and it's helpful it's super helpful for me because i have it gives me a guide um, and from that guide, I can kind of use it to assess my kids and then figure out where they are. And then that is where my starting point is. I'm hoping that made sense. But basically what I did is I have a six year old that would be considered a first grader and I have a, um, an eight year old that would be considered a third grader. My challenge is that my third grader is probably right where he should be. My first grader, on the other hand, um, how do I say it? That uh, language arts, spelling, reading, um, those are his strong areas. So a lot of the things that a normal first grade curriculum would have him doing are well under what he is um, capable of. And so he'll get really bored. <laughs> so uh, this was like really frustrating for me in the beginning because I didn't know how to approach it because at the same time he's still six um, so giving him work that would be at his level which is probably around a fourth to fifth grade um, reading level and understanding um, I can't give him that type of work because he's still six and he has the attention span of a six-year-old, you know? So time for learning was really helpful for me um, because I'm able to go in and check out their scope and sequence and I was able to see um, and assess what he is capable of and have a guide for what I need to be teaching him and then I can go in and choose how I'd like to teach it to him. Okay, I hope you're following me. So from looking at that scope and sequence, I then determined where was a good start for them. And basically I am teaching my first grader and my third grader on the same level, just in a slightly different way. But I, I'm kind of using the same type of course of study or curriculum for all three of my children, I just adapt it to where they are. So what I did was um, I went in and took a look at the scope and sequence on time for learning for the second grade to third grade. And from there, I determined where I was going to start. And then I took that scope and sequence and basically um, used it as a, a guide for me on what I'm going to teach and the order in which I'm going to teach it. Um, if we're learning something faster, I can move on to the next thing. Um, if I need a little help teaching something, I can look, um, I can preview the lesson on time for learning to see, to kind of give me a jump start, a head start on how I can approach teaching that thing. Let me try to explain a little bit further. I really hope that I'm not confusing you. So once I figured out where I was going to start on time for learning, I started putting it into my language arts goals inside of my um, Evernote um, planner. So I started with a, a review, um, which I know will probably breeze through this, but I wanted to make sure that I'm not missing anything and that my boys are really getting it. So the first thing I started with was sights and sounds of C-K-E-A-S-H-T-H-N-A-R. 
simple. When they laid it out in the scope and sequence like that, I totally understood what they were trying to do and I felt like I could definitely drive this one to the park. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use, she's trying to get in, you see? She's still in her pajamas, don't judge me. Okay, so after I determined that I'm gonna be doing the sights and sounds of C-K-E-A-S-H-T-H-A-R, I can figure out ways that I would like to teach those things to them based on what I know of them. And the way that I plan on doing that is I use the website k12reader.com. And I love this website because it gives me um, a few ideas on how to structure my practice with them. I like to teach my kids at my chalkboard in our classroom or I use the whiteboard on our iPad if we are away from our classroom. And I just like to physically be there to go through it with them. So instead of using the actual worksheets that would apply, I take a look at those worksheets and some of the examples and I use those examples myself in hands-on one-on-one -on -one teaching with my boys or oh, and then I add extra examples um, using those same guidelines does that make sense <laughs> so so if we're doing sights and sounds say of CK and SH and TH um, my kids are pretty well versed on the basic um, word families and that whole thing so I needed to step up and so what I use and I've mentioned this before is the app phonics genius and basically they separate a lot of um, larger words by the letter blends the letter sounds they're basically like amped up word families <laughs> So I use that a lot. And then if I need a worksheet, I go and find a worksheet. I'll use Pinterest, I'll use the k12reader.com, whatever it is that I need to use to teach that lesson. But I basically get my um, guidance for what it is that I'm trying to teach to them by looking at the sample lessons on time for learning. Hope that makes sense. I really hope that makes sense. <laughs> Um, some other apps that I have scheduled, that I have planned to use for this year, besides Phonics Genius, um, we'll also continue to use the Endless Reader app. Um, it's more towards Savannah's age, but it's always good practice and just fun for them to play with. And then I also have Phonics Rhyming Bee. The one that I'm really excited about is called Grow Grammar. I just found it when I was browsing and looking for new apps to try, and it looks like this app is gonna be a winner for us. It lays out the grammar inside of a sentence, and so I'm thinking it's gonna work really well for us. I'm excited to use that one. And then for Savannah, okay. So, <laughs> Savannah learned her letter sounds and some blends just the same way that the boys did using a lot of LeapFrog and um, some other apps. However, her transition into actually reading, it seems like it's, it's definitely gonna be a lot different than the boys were. I tried to use the same methods that I used for the boys and I noticed that they're not working as well. Um, so I tried to use the Learn With Homer app and I just can't get this girl to keep, she's just not into it like the boys were. So I just went ahead and canceled Learn With Homer even though I love it so much and it worked so well for my boys, I just had to realize that it was not gonna work for her. And I, I know her and I'm learning her and um, she needs a more hands-on approach. So I have a very independent um, process that's ready for the boys and I just realized she's gonna need a lot more of mommy time. So for her, instead of doing the same things that I did with the boys for language arts, I have decided to use teach your child to read in a hundred easy lessons. I've heard nothing but wonderful things about this and um, it wasn't going to work for my boys because they just learn totally differently. But I think that she is going to love it. So I actually picked this up from our library and um, I showed it to her and I told her that mommy was going to be teaching her how to read and we were going to learn how to read together with one lesson a day. And she was 
so excited. So this is what I'm going to use for her. So we're going to be doing one lesson a day and I'll see how this goes. I think it's gonna work pretty well for her though. So I don't have too many doubts about it. So we'll be using this and then I think the new app that I had for her was the Duck Duck Moose Reading app and I think she's going to also enjoy that. So she is going to be using that and that is what we're going to be using for language arts. That's what we're going to be using. Those are my curriculum picks for language arts for this year for homeschooling multiple children. Um, hopefully I can give you more examples of how it's fitting into our days. Um, in videos to come but if you like videos like these please be sure to give it a thumbs up make sure you are subscribed so you can receive notifications that we posted and keep up with us and i will see you in our next video bye